I'm here with Ian Juby from Canada, and we're in my home here, uh, since we can't get to the studio. Uh, Ian's been down here in Glenrose doing some research, and uh, while I have him here, I wanted to talk with him a little bit about what he's doing up in Canada. So, Ian, welcome again, and <laughs> welcome to our uh, our home here. Mm-hmm. So, your uh, your show Genesis Week airs in Canada, mm-hmm. and um, uh, we'll circle back around how people mm-hmm. can contact you and see that your show there in Canada and on YouTube. Um, but what's your What's you know if someone's watching this and and they say well you know I believe in evolution and and um, they're maybe they're a you know they're a Christian but they're a theistic evolutionist they just mm-hmm. they believe in long ages or millions of years of time and this is a running debate this is nothing new um, mm-hmm. but um, you know if you had to give someone who's an evolutionist to say here's the top three reasons why evolution is wrong. Like, just not even the creation thing, but just why is evolution wrong? Maybe someone's listening and they say, I believe in evolution because the scientists have said, quote, unquote, or Mm -hmm. here's, you know, Lucy, the missing link or whatever that they've heard. What's the what's the one, two, three punch on here's something you can take home, consider it and look at. So. Number one, which they teach us in high school, ironically, uh, is abiogenesis, um, life from non-life. So effectively, if you boil it down, uh, I know it sounds sarcastic, but it's not. It's this is the facts. Uh, What they are claiming is that life came from a rock. That is what they are claiming. Um, So in high school, they teach us this is impossible. Life can only come from life. That's the law of biogenesis. And for something to be a scientific and natural law, it, uh, it's like the epitome of stringency. You cannot, it takes a lot for something to become a scientific and natural law. Mm-hmm, so then flipping it on its head and subtly suggesting that the first life on Earth came from non-life. Uh, minerals in the oceans is literally what they're saying. Um, you are thus claiming to violate a scientific and natural law. So by definition, that is a supernatural world process. It is outside of the natural realm. It is completely contrary to right. all observable natural processes. So it is anti-science and supernatural by definition. Mm. Um, so... Now that we can agree on that, that we both, all, both of our origins theories are supernatural in or, origin, mm-hmm. we just happen to know who our creator is. <laughs> um, sure. You know, and uh, so there's that one. Uh, the second one, which is most common, which you already mentioned, the whole, you know, uh, ape to man drawing that everybody sees, you know, where you got the, the ape getting taller yeah. and larger. And what I like to up. call the pond scum to Einstein theory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. a good one. Um, everyone is like hugely convinced it just by that drawing. And the thing is the evolutionists themselves have admitted that drawing is complete and utter fiction. First of all, I I like to take that drawing that you see in all the textbooks Mm -hmm. of ape to man. Mm -hmm. And then I show you what you really find, which is man and ape, man and ape, man and ape, man and ape, man and ape. And they're all over the map. Mm. You find them all together. There is no sequence. You find them all together. Right. And as they pointed out in their book, when you take a look at all of the original papers from like the 70s, all the major paleontological, paleontological bigwigs, uh, the, the Lee Keys, uh, Lovejoy, uh, oh, yeah, Lovejoy. Uh, Den, uh, Johansson, all of them. When you take a look at their original papers, they all admit to finding human and apes found together and human artifacts found with the supposed hominid ancestors. Hmm, that's interesting because you don't hear about that. And it's right there in the papers, usually right in the abstract. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, they talk about it openly, but you never hear about it again. So. Wow, interesting. So, um, okay, the third thing, if you had to know why evolution isn't true, what would be the third thing? Uh, what was the third? Oh, the biggest one, uh, the biggest struggle everyone has, you also mentioned, is the age of the Earth. So yep. things like starlight and time, how can light get to Earth? 
Uh, it takes billions of years to get to Earth, yet we still have light from deep stars. Mm -hmm. That's a complex subject, but the the deep time issue, uh, which was a fabricated issue, um, and it and I, I covered this in Complete Creation. I, I think I spent the first eight or nine episodes just on this topic of mm. the whole idea of deep time. Okay, and it was basically uh, invented by a lawyer. It was not based on science. He, he uh, proposed this idea of deep time to explain away the evidence left behind by Noah's flood. And he actually wrote that in his private correspondence and writings. So we wouldn't have known that, except that after he died, his sister published his writings. Uh, and that was Sir Charles Lyell. And uh, after his sister published his private writings and correspondence, there it is in glorious detail. He even spelled out uh, his plan. He's a lawyer. He's not a geologist, mm, yeah. but he was interested in geology and used geology to promote this new history, uh, which would replace, in his words, the mosaic or geology according to Moses. Right. Um, and you just talk, and you talk about that in your uh, in the film that you just recently debuted on mm -hmm. YouTube, uh, the Noah Flood. Yes. And and so and you talk about Charles Lyell, mm -hmm. and and um, tell us a little bit about that real quick, and then the part two of that, the Genesis or the Noah Flood that's coming out. Yeah. So uh, the, the the script has pretty much been written for that. It was written. 12 years ago, I think it was. Uh, and um, yeah, so we, we just uh, managed to get part one about 90, 95% complete. So uh, Stephen Arsati, uh, the, the, my co-producer, uh, done a fantastic job. But right now we're at the, yeah. the slow grind part of the movie, which is the 3D animation uh, special effects. Uh, it, it is on par with, any Hollywood production. Yeah, it's well um, done. I watched it live when you, uh, you when you debuted it on YouTube. Uh, so are you gonna? So um, are you gonna repeat the the debut of part one anytime soon? And um, when when do you expect part two to come out? Um, so part two depends strictly on the finances. So we're we we, we released part one as a, a limited preview uh, to try and round up the the funds for part two. Um, we have spent, including our own funds and the, uh, the, the funds of numerous, I've lost count of how many generous donation donors and those who even prayed for us too. I mean, I can't thank them enough. Uh, so we released part one as a limited preview, um, partly to say thank you to, to our countless supporters sure, yeah. uh all total i th i think we raised a little over fifty thousand. um wow. but the, which to me is an astronomical amount of money but then i look around at some of the other movies that were done and none of them are under a million yeah so, finding noah for example was a million and a half yep. uh, to produce and and of course that was none of our money but <laughs> but yeah you're right that mm -hmm. that it's very expensive to do those those films mm -hmm. All right, so how do people find you, Ian? Um, what's your website if they want to donate to the next part two of the of the film? Uh, and your your work at Genesis Week in Canada and the in your channel. How do people get hold of you? Okay, so the the Noah Flood is noahflood uh, dot com, um, and you can go. You can donate there. Uh, Steven's got a whole mess of free free previews up there and whatnot, so you can yeah. see the the progress. Uh, my website is my name, ianjuby.org, I-A-N-J-U-B-Y.org, genesisweek.com. So oh, perfect. You can, find, you can find them all there. So. Genesisweek.com. Okay, mm -hmm. do you have a specific YouTube channel that people can go watch? Uh, you, Wazulu, which is a long story behind that name. But anyway, <laughs> uh, W-A-Z-O-O-L-O-O.com uh, takes you to the YouTube channel. Okay, perfect. So. Wazulu.com. Y'all mm -hmm. go check it out. Ian, thanks for coming over to the to the house here and just talking a little bit mm -hmm. about that you're you're headed back up to canada soon so we couldn't get you in the studio but we could get you while you're here mm -hmm. and you're, you're doing some great work up there in canada i know that uh people will want to know and, and go and take a look at what, at what you're doing so thank you so much for for the time and 
um, and for your effort putting in the ministry. I know you're reaching a lot of people in Canada, so uh, go out to uh, Ian's website and, and uh, give him uh, some support uh, if you can and if you want to. Uh, Ian, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you for having me.